Russia's ambassador repeated Moscow's denial at the UN Security Council meeting and suggested that UK's attack was a provocation aimed at tarnishing Russia's image ahead of the World Cup and elections. Russia demanded that Britain hand over samples of the nerve agent for analysis in Moscow and suggested that if Britain was able to identify the chemical, it must also be able to produce it. Britain accused Russia of violating the Chemical Weapons Convention by failing to declare the military-grade nerve agent Novichok, which it says was used to poison an ex-Russian agent. Britain's deputy UN ambassador Jonathan Allen said Russia informed the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons, which monitors the convention last September, that it completed the destruction of its stockpiles and facilities. Britain said that Russia is in serious breach of the chemical weapons program. Allen said that fact alone should negate any Russian arguments about the possibility of other countries having inherited this technology. Allen also said that Russia either did not care that the weapon used would be traced back to them or mistakenly believed they could cover their traces. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley said that the United States believes Russia is responsible for a chemical attack in Britain on a former Russia double agent and his daughter. Haley urged the council to hold Russia accountable. Haley said that America stood in absolute solidarity with Britain and called on Russia to provide answers to the questions posed by the U.K. government. Britain will kick out 23 Russian diplomats, the biggest such expulsion since the Cold War over the chemical attack. May told Parliament that Russia had failed to respond to her demand for an explanation and how a Soviet-designed chemical Novichok was used in the English city of Salisbury. May said that the 23 diplomats identified as undeclared intelligence officers had one week to leave and Russian intelligence capabilities in Britain would be damaged for years. May pointed the finger firmly at Russian President Vladimir Putin as she outlined retaliatory measures in Parliament. Meanwhile, France says it would be in touch with Britain to coordinate a response to a nerve agent attack on a Russian spy, which London has blamed on Russia after an earlier muted reaction to Britain's allegations. In contrast to German Chancellor Angela Merkel and US President Donald Trump, who assured Theresa May that they were taking her government's views seriously, French Pres President Emmanuel Macron and other French officials have declined to point a finger directly at Russia. French government spokesman has said it was too early for Paris to decide whether action should be taken and a decision would be made only once a case of Russian involvement was proven. A month after the deadly mass shooting in Florida High School, waves of students marched out of class classrooms to demand stricter gun laws and an end to school massacres. Joining a movement spearheaded by survivors of the Florida shooting, 17-minute walkouts were planned at schools across U.S. time zones, commemorating the 17 students and staff killed at Major A. Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. Escorted by slow-moving police cars, students from Maryland's Montgomery Blair High School marched to a metro station where they boarded a train to the White House. The students demonstrated holding signs, chanting and calling for new gun control laws. The U.S. House of Representatives overwhelmingly passed legislation to help schools and local law enforcement prevent gun violence one month after the mass shooting at a Florida high school that killed 17 people. The House passed the bill by a vote of 407-10, sending it to the Senate for consideration. Early on Wednesday, the White House announced President Donald Trump's support of the bill, which is far short of the broader gun control legislation. He talked about shortly after the shooting at Florida High School.
A Florida judge entered a not guilty plea for Nicholas Cruz, who faces a possible death penalty for a massacre at a high school last month that killed 17 people and triggered a nationwide walkout of students on Wednesday. 19-year-old Cruz chose to remain silent during a hearing in Broward County Circuit Court. Judge entered the not guilty plea on his behalf for 17 counts, each of first-degree murder and attempted murder for the shooting spree in Parkland. Republicans sounded alarms after Democrats claimed a victory in a Pennsylvania congregational election seen as a referendum on U.S. President Donald Trump's performance in an ominous sign for Trump's Republican eight months before national midterm elections. Moderate Democrat Connor Lamb led conservative Republican Rick Sacken on Wednesday by a fraction of a percentage point for the House of Representatives seat. The earliest the election result could be certified is March 26, but the final tally could be unknown for weeks. County officials are expected to begin counting an unknown number of provisional paper ballots late this week and military ballots next week. U.S. television commentator and economic analyst Larry Kudlow has announced that he has accepted an offer from President Donald Trump to become the White House top economic advisor, replacing Gary Cohen. Kudlow said it was an enormous honor for him to be nominated. He also said that China has earned a tough response from the United States and other countries on trade, even though he has previously criticized blanket tariffs. Kudlow said he was relieved by proposed exclusions for certain countries to President Donald Trump's announced steel and aluminium tariffs and that he did not think the tariffs would hurt the broader U.S. economy. U.S. President Donald Trump said that U.S. will f find a way to purchase 25 Boeing F-18 Super Hornets from Boeing. Trump saw aircraft prototypes and met employees as he toured a Boeing factory in Missouri. Trump said that U.S. is working on the price. The exchange between Trump and Muellenberg came during a roundtable discussion about tax reform with area business leaders hosted by Boeing. The Syrian army continued its advance on eastern Ghouta and has now entered the town of Hamure, a video showed tanks moving through farmland and smoke rising above buildings in different parts of the town. The first medical evacuation since the offensive began and a 25-truck convoy carrying food and medical aid will enter the besieged rebel-held town of Duma today. More than 1,000 1,220 civilians have been killed in eastern Ghouta since February 18th. Jamaat al Dawa chief and 2611 attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed's newly formed Milli Muslim League has announced that it will launch its own manifesto on March 23rd ahead of the Pakistan general elections later this year. This comes after the Islamabad High Court set aside the decision of the Election Commission of Pakistan to reject the application of Saeed's political party for registration as a political party last week. The ECP had earlier rejected its application to register Saeed's political Political party on the Pakistan Interior Ministry's recommendation. A suspected suicide attack near a police checkpoint killed five police and four bystanders and wounded 27 others near the eastern city of Lahore. Lahore police chief said that evidence collected from the scene suggests it was a suicide attack. Police said the blast took place after evening prayers and most members of the religious group had exited into the street. Lahore police chief say many of the wounded were police and, th and three were hospitalized in critical condition. Other wounded included members of the Islamic preaching group known as Tablighi Jamaat. Taliban group Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan claimed responsibility for the bombing, saying it was a suicide attack. At least six inmates died and more than 20 were injured in a well-known Bolivian prison while attempting to resist a police search of the Palmasola jail in Santa Cruz. 
Earlier on Wednesday, some 2,000 police entered the prison where they found firearms and alcohol distillery, cocaine and marijuana. Police say at least six cops were shot and injured. Some 5,000 men and women are incarcerated in Palmasola where a clash between inmates in 2013 left 34 people dead. The government recently ordered the evacuation of dozens of children who had been living with their parents at the prison because of child prostitution. And the Slovenian Prime Minister resigned hours after the Supreme Court annulled the result of a September referendum that approved a 1 billion euro railway project. The centre-left government's biggest investment programme, Shara told a news conference he would keep the post until a new government is formed. Slovenia is scheduled to hold an election in June. It is not clear if Shara's resignation would bring the election forward. Clashes broke out between riot policemen and dozens of people who allegedly invaded an area in Villa El Salvador, an urban, largely residential coastal district on the outskirts of Lima in Peru. Officers were deployed to remove about 2,000 alleged squatters from the area who claim the land had been untouched for 12 years and was full of rubbish. According to local media reports, the government intends to use the land to expand a street. Police used tear gas to disperse the crowds. Reports suggest that three people were arrested after revisiting eviction. Myanmar has only been able to verify 374 Rohingya Muslim refugees for possible repatriation from Bangladesh as officials blame their neighbour for not providing the correct information about the refugees. Nearly 700,000 Rohingya fled Myanmar after militant attacks on August 25th sparked a crackdown led by security forces in the western Rakhine state that the United Nations and United States have said constituted ethnic cleansing. The Suki administration has sought to counter the allegations by forging ahead with development in Rakhine and by readying reception centers and a camp for returnees. Brazilian President Michel Temer has said that Brazil will respond with caution to planned U.S. tariffs on steel and aluminium to avoid hurting ties with its second largest trade partner. Temer said if talks fail, Brazil will not hesitate to take a complaint to the World Trade Organization. He also urged Brazilian steel producers and their U.S. clients to work together in lobbying the U.S. government and Congress to modify the tariffs announced last week by President Donald Trump. The Brazilian president emphasized that if there is no friendly solution, Brazil will join other countries in filing a complaint at the WTO. Thousands of Sevastopol residents gathered for a rally supporting Russian President Vladimir Putin who took to stage at a rally of voters ahead of the presidential poll. Putin's visit to Crimea touting his annexation of the peninsula to voters came days before an election but guaranteed to deliver him a second consecutive term in power. Russia's 2014 annexation of Crimea from Ukraine drew international condemnation and sanctions, but many Russians saw it as restoring Moscow's rule over a region they regard as being historically Russian. Former Catalan President Puigdemont's party maintained its support for jailed lawmaker Jordi Sanchez as candidate to lead Catalonia and said that the party was not contemplating a scenario that included new elections. Catalonia postponed until further notice the election of a new regional president after Spain's Supreme Court ruled that Sanchez would not be allowed to leave jail to attend a parliamentary session planned for Monday. The cat The Catalan party spokesperson said the party would not consider any other candidate after his party's lawmakers met in Brussels with former Catalan president Carlos 
Puigdemont, who is in self-imposed exile in the Belgium capital and faces arrest for his role in Catalonia's independence drive if he returns to Spain. According to a latest report, global warming could place 25 to 50 percent of species in the Amazon, Madagascar and other biodiverse areas at risk of localized extinction within decades. The lower projection is based on a mercury rise of 2 degrees Celsius over pre-industrial revolution levels, the warming ceiling that the world's nations agreed on in 2015. The highest is for out-of-control warming of 4.5 degrees Celsius. The report focused on 33 so-called priority places, which host some of the world's richest and most unusual terrestrial species, including iconic endangered or endemic plants and animals. Dubbed as a French Spider-Man for his gravity-defying climbing skills, Alan Robert has set yet another record. Robert reached the summit of the fourth tallest building in the Paris business district, undeterred by security who had intercepted an earlier attempt. Robert's passion has taken him to more than 150 skyscrapers around the world, including Dubai's Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building, the Eiffel Tower and the Sydney Opera House. It took Robert just over an hour to scale to the top of the 187-meter-high tour total, a feat he has accomplished twice in the past. And it's over to stories from India. The official Twitter account of Indian carrier Air India has been hacked by suspected Turkish hackers. The cover photo of the verified account showed the image of Turkish airline and the tweets displaying in the account were also in Turkish language. Pro-Turkish tweets are being shared on the account and while filing the re report, this verified blue tick has also been removed. Air India has now removed the Turkish profile photo to restore the account. Indian President Ram Nath Kovind arrived at the Madagascar capital on a Wednesday in the last leg of his five-day two-nation visit. Kovind was received by Madagascar Prime Minister at the airport. The President was accompanied by his wife and the First Lady of India, Savita Kovind. Kovind received a guard of honour on his arrival. Kovind is the first Indian President to visit Madagascar. In a stunning blow of the 2019 general elections, the BJP has lost by polls to all three Lok Sabha seats it contested, including its bastion, Gorakhpur and Pulpur in Uttar Pradesh, besides Araria in Bihar. A consolidation of OBC, Dalit and Muslim votes part Samajwadi candidate to victory in Gorakhpur. A seat represented by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath for five successive terms and Poolpur, which elected his deputy Keshav Prasad Maurya in the 2014 Lok Sabha polls. The National Investigation Agency has questioned six people, including the eldest son of Hizbul Mujahideen chief, Said Salahuddin, in connection with a 2011 terror funding case. Officials said here, Salahuddin's eldest son, Shakil Yusuf, works as a medical assistant at Srinagar's Sheri Kashmir Institute of Medical Sciences. Yusuf appeared before the agency along with five others suspected to have received funds from Salahuddin. The NIA wanted to question him over allegations that he used to receive funds sent by his father through a US-based international wire transfer company. The Committee of Administrators in charge of running Indian cricket has asked the BCCI to investigate allegations of corruption against Pesa Mohammad Shami. Shami's wife, Haseen Jahan, had released an alleged recording of a telephonic conversation regarding money sent to Shami by a UK national through a Pakistani woman in Dubai.